Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to take on a couple of problems involving the three theory theorems on proportion. So we have the side splitter theorem, the angle bisector theorem, and the theorem that involves two transversals cutting across three parallel lines. All right, so let's get started. A lot of exciting problems to do. Here we go. Number 26 in the book for chapter 8.5. We're given that GK is parallel to HJ. We're given that GK is five units. Uh, and we're also given that GF is X minus two units. HG is nine units. FK is four and KJ is X plus three units. And we need to find the parameter of the triangle. Okay, so the first thing let's do is let's figure out what the value of x is. And we can use the side splitter theorem to find that out. So we know that x minus 2 over 9 is equal to 4 over x plus 3. So we use our means extremes product theorem. We multiply, cross multiply. So we multiply the extremes times the means, and we get x squared plus x <clears throat> uh, minus 6 is equal to 36. Then we subtract 36 from both sides and we use our zero product property. So I have x squared plus x minus 42 is equal to zero. And then we factor the quadratic into x uh, plus 7 times x minus 6 is equal to zero. And then we find out that x can be either negative 7 or 6 to make this statement true. Now, if x is negative 7 in terms of this triangle, we're going to end up with negative values both for gf and jk. So we know that negative 6 is not going to be work, not going to work. It's an extraneous solution in this case. We know that x is just going to be equal to 6. So if x is equal to 6, then gf becomes 4 and kj uh, becomes 9. That's interesting. So fk, kj are the same lengths as fg and gh. So you don't want to look at the triangle because that, that would seem odd. FJ seems like it's longer than FK, but in fact, it's the same length. All right, now we're going to use what we know about uh, FG and uh, KJ to figure out what Y is. So we remember that FG over FH is going to be the same as GK over HJ. Now, the common mistake is to say that 4 over 9 is equal to 5 over y, but if you think about it, the yhj value relates to the entire triangle hfj, um, not to some obscure triangle or quadrilateral hgkj. So y applies to this entire segment here. So the proportion is going to be 4 over 9 is going to be, e I'm sorry, 4 over 13. So 4fg over fh is equal to 5 over y. So let's just write that out. fg over fh is equal to gk over hj. So now all we have to do is solve for y. We have 4y is equal to 65. And y ends up being 16 and 1 quarter, if I'm not mistaken. So you can check the math on me on that. So if y is equal to 16 and 1 fourth, and GF and GH are equal to uh, 4 and 9 respectively, and FK and KJ are equal to 4 and 9 respectively. The parameter is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 9 plus 9 plus 16 and 1 quarter, which gives us uh, 8, 17, 26, 42.25. So the answer for the parameter is 42.25, and also, again, please check my math on that. Let's move on to problem number 27. I'll give you a second just to digest this. Okay, number 27. Two flagpoles are 10 meters and 70 meters tall and are 100 meters apart. We want to find the height of the point where a line from the top of the first to the bottom of the second intersects a line from the bottom of the first to the top of the second. All right, so the first problem that we have here is to draw the diagram. A lot of times in geometry, it's a really the, the most difficult part of proving whatever you need to prove is interpreting what the question is asking and then drawing the diagram. So let's go ahead and let's draw up the diagram 
and I actually already have it drawn up for you. So I had the first flagpole, it's 10 meters high. Put a little flag here, and these are obviously not drawn to scale. And then my second flagpole is 70 meters high. You know, the two flagpoles are 100 meters apart. All right, and we want to find the height of the point <clears throat> of intersection where the uh, line from the top of the first to the bottom of the second intersects the line from the top of the second to the bottom of the first. All right, so it looks like we've got two triangles here. I have two parallel lines. So I know that <clears throat> uh, these two angles here are going to be alternate interior angles. They're going to be congruent. And then I have, again, another two alternate interior angles that are congruent to my parallel lines. So what ends up happening is I have, and also my vertical angles, I have two similar triangles. And the relationship is going to be 10 to 70 units. But the trick is I need to find a distance from this point to the ground. So how do I go about doing that? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line from the bottom of each pole, and we're going to let uh, that line equal 100. So we said they're 100 meters apart. This entire line here is 100. And then we're going to draw a line from the point of intersection uh, to the, basically the ground, and it's going to form a right angle. We're going to draw it straight down to that ground. And we're going to label this distance here as y. So the distance from this point to the second flagpole is going to be x. Okay, so that distance from the intersection of y and this line that forms the base uh, between the two flagpoles. <clears throat> uh, and that distance from here to here we'll call x, and the distance from the smaller flagpole to that point of intersection will be 100 minus x. Right now we can create some relationships between these distances to figure out what y is. So I know that 100 minus x is 100 minus x <clears throat> over 100, which is the entire distance, is going to be equal to y right, over this entire length 70. Right, so I'm dealing with this one triangle here. So let's outline it. <clears throat> now this triangle here, and this is uh, somewhat of a complicated problem. So I have my triangle here, and I'm going to use a side splitter theorem. I'm going to say that 100 minus x <clears throat> over 100 is equal to y over 70. Now I can also say that x <clears throat> over 100 minus x is equal to y over 10. Well, see, what I did was I made the same mistake that many students make. I said that x over 100 minus x is equal to y over 10. And that's actually not the case. So let's erase that. <clears throat> x over should be x over 100. This just goes to show you that anyone can make this mistake. It's a common error. So x over 100 is equal to y over 10. All right. So I have th the first triangle relationship in the green is 100 minus x over 100 is equal to y over 70. And the second relationship I have is x. So in this second triangle, and then I'll mark this in blue. X over 100 is equal to Y over 10. So now I have two relationships. I can solve uh, for one in terms of the other and then solve for one variable. So let's go through that process. Let's use the right-hand um, equation or proportion to solve. I have 10X is equal to 100Y where I can say that x is equal to 10y. All right, so now what I can do is I can substitute 10y in for x <clears throat> into the second proportion, and I have 100 minus 10y over 100 is equal to y over 70. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 10. And I end up with 100 minus 10y over 10 is equal to y <coughs> over, uh, sorry, I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. Uh, 100 minus 10y over 10 is equal to y over 7. 
So I multiply, use my cross multiplication, means extremes product theorem. I have 7 times 100, which is 700, minus 70y is equal to 10y. Or I can say 700 is equal to 70y plus 10y, or 80y. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 80 uh, to figure out what, what y is, and I end up with y is equal to 8 and 3 quarters. So again, check my math on this. You can use your calculator to check to make sure that I'm correct. Okay, next problem. Prove that a line that divides two sides, and I think I lied to you. I think I said we had three problems, but I believe we have four. Prove that a line that divides two sides of a triangle proportionally is parallel to the third side. So here we have the markup of the diagram, and we're going to say x, and this is y, and this is a over b, and we want to prove, let's call this uh, d and e, and then f should be a capital letter, uh, and g. So we'll make this d and e. and F and G, and we'll call this point H. All right, so we want to, we want to figure out <clears throat> if X over Y is equal to A over B, then we want to prove that DE is parallel to FG. All right, so how do we prove that DE is parallel to FG? Uh, so this is a question mark. We don't know that it's parallel yet. But we do know that the line divides the two sides of the triangle proportionally. So we're going to say that <clears throat> HD over DF is proportional to HE over EG, and that's a given. Now, I'm also going to say that angle H is congruent to itself. Right. So now I have two triangles, HDE, so triangle HDE, and triangle HFG that are similar, <clears throat> sorry, HFG, that are similar by side, angle, side. So I have two sides that are proportional, the same ratio between the two, and an angle H that's congruent. Well, then I know that <clears throat> H angle HDE is congruent to angle F because corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. And if HDE is congruent to HFG, then I have two parallel lines because if alternate, uh, actually, if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. That's how we prove that. Okay, so a more formal two column proof, I'll just leave this here for you. And then I'm going to move on to the next problem. Okay, <clears throat> problem number 29. We have ray RW, and we're going to label this properly because it's not labeled properly. So ray RW bisects <clears throat> angle SRT, so this is T, and TV bisects RTS. We know that RV is 4 and SV is 5, SW is 6 units, and WT is 7 units. And we need to show that the given information is impossible. Well, we really have two angle bisector theorems, or two uh, triangles that we can apply the angle bisector theorem to. So let's lay out the proportions first. Well, I know that <clears throat> by the angle bisector theorem, 4 is to 5 as RT is to TS. And TS in this case is going to be 13. So let me rewrite TS as 13. So 7 plus 6. Then I also know by the angle bisector theorem that <clears throat> RS is to RT as 6 is to 7. So I can say RS, which is 9, is to RT as 6 is to 7. So if we solve for RT, uh, on the left-hand side I have 5RT is equal to 52. 
or RT is equal to 10.4. In this case, I have, I use my means extremes product theorem. I have 6RT is equal to 63. In this case, RT is equal to 10.5. So we see that by the angle bisector theorem, because RT is not the same uh, between the two proportions, that this particular diagram is not possible. Okay, moving on to this, the final, the fourth and last problem. In number 30, we're given a diagram <clears throat> and the triangle, and we're given that BR is going to be parallel to the y-axis. We're also given that AR is parallel to the x-axis. So BR is parallel to the y-axis, AR is parallel to the x-axis, and point P divides AB in the ratio of 2 to 3. We need to find the coordinates of R and Q. Well, if BR is parallel to the y-axis and AR is parallel to the x-axis, I know that angle R is going to be a right uh, angle. So I know that <clears throat> PQ and AR are parallel, and I know that R is going to contain the same y-coordinate as A and the same x-coordinate as B. So I can figure out by observation that my coordinate for R is going to be 9, 3. All right, and now the distance between B and R is going to be 10 units. All right. Well, I know also that P, B, Q is congruent to itself. So I have two triangles that are similar by the AA similarity theorem. And those two triangles are going to be uh, P, B, Q. And that's going to be similar to triangle A, B, R. Now I can use the relationships between the side lengths of both of the triangles to figure out uh, what the distance is from P to Q, and what the distance is from B to A. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to say that B to P over B to A is going to be the same as B to Q over B to R. All right, so I can say that 3K over 5K is going to be equal to BQ over BR, which we found out was 10 units. Now I can divide both sides by K, so I know that this is going to be 3 to 5, or at least the left-hand side. K reduces to 1. And so 3 over 5 is equal to BQ over 10. Or 5BQ is equal to 30. Or BQ is equal to 6. If BQ is equal to 6, then I know the coordinate is going to be 9, 9. So I'm just running, if BQ is 6 units, I'm sorry, BQ is 6 units, this is actually going to be 7. So I subtract 6 units from 13, and I end up with Q as 9, 7. So again, what I did was I, by observation, I found out that point R was 9, coordinate 9, 3. I know that BR and AR are perpendicular to each other. They form a right angle. <clears throat> I know that R contains the same Y coordinate as A and the same X coordinate as B. I know that angle B is congruent to itself. So I have two similar triangles, P, B, Q, and A, B, R. With the two similar triangles, I can establish the relationship of 3K over 5K, or PB over BA, which is going to be equal to BQ over BR, or BQ over 10, so the difference in the Y coordinate for, from B to R. Then I use my uh, means extremes product theorem, and I set up my proportion to figure out that 5BQ is equal to 30, and BQ is equal to 6. If BQ is equal to 6, I'm reducing the Y value of the coordinate by 6, so I end up with a coordinate for Q as 9, 7.